This video is all about Senex. If you don't know what Senex is, it's an event that's held every year at Millbrook Proving Grounds in Bedfordshire and they have the latest transport technology. So I thought it'd be a great idea to get my camera out while I was there through work with Dynamon to see what I could find which would excite the charge heads. And boy, what did I find but an electric GT40 and many other interesting things. So join me on this journey focused on what I thought you would like to see. Please excuse, I had a bit of man flu during this, so my head was all over the place, and the sound quality is not the greatest because it was so busy, there's a lot of background noise. But I hope you enjoy this video. Right, we've just started at Senex, and I've seen something that's really interesting that I want to share with you guys. Have a look at this. Ben. Hello, how are you doing? It's great to see you. Now, you might have seen uh, Ben in a couple of episodes of Charge Heads before, uh, showing off the Microlino. I'll put the video up here, actually. You've got something new to show us. Yes, yes, this is what we've been working on for the last wee while. It's a cable management uh, bit of kit, which is largely designed for terrace homes, but potentially depots and hotels and places that essentially press a little button on a key fob and it lowers the cable from above. And the whole idea for this is it makes charging easy. You don't have to worry about your cable mank um, and you can just plug your beast in. Look at that. I know that it's still in development stage. Have you got any idea in terms of cost yet? Because I know that uh, Kerbo Charge, who have actually recently taken over Charge Gully, which I saw on yes. LinkedIn the other day, um, they charge around about a thousand pounds for their gully. Do we know roughly what sort of this yeah. cost this is going to be yet? We have a, a target price of 1200 installed within the ballpark. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've got a little bit more technical kit on our, our thing, but yeah, they've yeah. got a, a slightly more complicated and convoluted installation process. And you have, you have to bend down for theirs, and you don't have to bend <laughs> down for this. <laughs> no. So if you've, if you've got a bad back, this is perfect, right? Yep. Uh, <laughs> I love the fact that it comes down at a click of a button. So it's basically, uh, Ben's got a remote there, and you press the button as soon as you pull up to your house, or you know, it could be used for a fleet operation as well. And press it again, and off it goes. Look at that. Excellent. Nice. Thank you very much, Ben. Thank you. Really Good appreciate you him. showing us. So what we've got here is Rock System and they are an autonomous charging product. And this is certainly gonna be growing and growing. So what this system actually does is it uses a normal off the shelf charger, but then it uses their technology to indicate when the vehicle is ready for a charge, when it's in the right location, and then it simply plugs it in, charges it, and then off it goes again. This is the future, people. Technology. 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 Right, we're just at the Electrogenic stand and I thought I'd kind of give you a bit of an insight in terms of what they're doing at the moment because they're not just doing EV conversions anymore. So yes, Electrogenic, you'll probably know them for their EV conversions. They've done some really cool ones. I mean, this lovely Mini here with their conversion kit. Uh, Jaguar E-Type just over here. Also, they have done some really unique cars like that Jaguar XJS, Defenders and also DSs. But the reason I want to come over and give you a bit of an insight in terms of what they're doing now is they're getting into the heavy goods industry. So you might be thinking, well, that's just a battery pack in front of us. Well, actually, this is a prototype for a HGV, an eHGV, to connect a 190 kilowatt hour battery to it. So in terms of the spec of this battery unit, which would, can be connected to a trailer, it has a discharge rate of 200 kilowatts and it can be charged at 100 kilowatts DC or 22 kilowatts AC. It's all liquid cooled, the batteries are NMC. Yeah, this is the prototype. But they're actually working in the same industry that I, I'm in from a HGV point of view. So it's great to see not only the EV conversions here, but also the fact that they're getting involved in the fleet industry as well. Unique bespoke projects using technology. That's what Electrogenic are getting into now. It's great to see it and it's great to see their cars here. So we've got Ali to talk to us a little bit about uh, Netic and what they're doing in the market. You might recognize the name because it's the type of motors that Felton sell. But what's going on in the uh, motor world at the moment at Netic? Yeah, so that's the new product which we have launched this year. It's a complete scalable uh, electric drive unit yeah. with the gearbox, motor and inverter. 
So the gearbox is very scalable. It goes ranges from gear ratio 10 to 15 and up to 21.59. So the good thing is all these gear ratios, we are keeping the packaging exactly the same, yep. not changing. Also, on the motor side, it's quite scalable. It goes from 1U length to 5U length. Also, we have a JV partner with the European uh, inverter. These inverters can go up to 800 volts. And you guys are based in the UK, aren't you? Yes, we are in UK. And we have a manufacturing facility in UK in Andover. Thank you so much for your help, Eddie. Thank have you. a good day. So we're at the Everati stand at the moment, uh, just talking to Tony Fong, who's one of the engineers. And um, yeah, they're opening the clamshell because what they're aiming to do is to show the electric GT40, yes, the electric GT40 in different looks, uh, just to keep the interest there, really. So you can see the two, two motors in the back. Wow, okay. We're gonna have to get some more detail on this. So I've managed to commandeer Tony uh, Fong, who's head of engineering. Tony, I'm really interested to know the detail on your GT40. I've just been told it's got two motors. This is right. That's right. Um, two motors at the back. Um, it's, it's driving to a parallel axis uh, transmission, going to an LSD, so good old fashioned LSD. Nice. Um, the car is capable of 800 horsepower. Wow. Okay. Um, single pack battery. This is an upgrade from previous three um, three battery packed into one, uh, just to reduce the weight and then balance. And I see you've got two radiators. Is this for cooling the motor or the batteries? <clears throat> Correct. So one of it is uh, actually is free cooling loop. So that's one on the front as well. Oh wow! Okay. So the radiator in the front will cool the battery and the um, aircon and then the side is one for the motor and the other side is for the inverter right. and the charger as well okay so that so the front one is for the battery correct one's for the motor yeah one's for the inverter correct in terms of battery cooling is when it do fast charging because it's constant load ah uh, yes of course yeah, it yeah. Needs that's that why you need a heavy um, uh, and is, uh, is, the, is the connection here? No. no. We would like to, okay. but a lot of charging port, uh, the manufacturer will say doesn't recognize it for facing north because of debris fallen. Okay. So I can show you where the charge port are. Probably not with the clamshells are, but it's right at the back where, okay. where the um, number plate flips up and you can okay. plug it in. So this right. is 700 volt. And what's the kind of uh, max charging DC speed that this can take? Um, we're still in testing, but we hope to get like 125 watt, right? A kilowatt, sorry. Um, yeah. But we are still pushing the boundary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is a proof of concept vehicle. And can you remind uh, the audience, you know, what other models you guys do? Because it's not just GT40s like this amazing beast you do. You do, no. you do the 964, 911 right. Porsche. Uh, you got the Defenders, uh, the um, Land Rover series. Yeah, the Land Rover series, and you're developing the 993 Porsche conversion at the moment. Correct. Yeah. Excellent. And you know, what's the sort of time frame on that at the moment? Um, depends who you ask. <laughs> Obviously, okay. the engineer will like to take as much time no, as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so the salespeople uh, is it? Salespeople tomorrow? promise you yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think realistically, the whole development program, um, we're aiming to have the car running within like 12 months. Fantastic. From activation. Well, I really look forward to checking that out. Yep. And uh, I must admit, looking at the interior on this PC, I don't know if you can just see it there. Oh, we've got a door open. I'm off. Okay, I'm yep. off. Do you want to sit in it as well? Of course I want to sit in it. Here I go. Right, we're going in uh, this very expensive car. I'll try and make, not, not make too many noises as I fold myself into the cockpit. Ah, oh, it's actually not too bad. Okay, now, now this, this is the tricky bit. This is where the head thing goes over. Okay. Well, it looks like I'm standing here for the duration because I don't know where the, uh, <laughs> the handle is to get myself out. But this is lovely in here. Smells amazing. So we've got, it's interesting that Speedo's there. 
at the side. I mean, I've never been in a GT40 before, um, so uh, this might be traditional, but you've got all the flick switches, charge vault, Everati gauges in here, nice sound system. I'm not sure about the windows. I think I probably need something a little bit bigger than that myself, but I bet this goes like a monster. And you can even see the battery pack behind you. But I better get out because uh, I think uh, there's a line forming. So the EV Rally have got a stop here at the Senex show today. So they've got a very interesting mix of cars here. You've got the Hyundai Ioniq and N, 5N, Porsche Taycan, new Tesla model Y, um, Ford Transit van, iX, new Audi A6, which has got an interesting colour scheme. Yeah, then we've got Verizon van, which is a uh, new van. What else have we got in here? We've got a Skywell Bell, and check out the video up here, which I did a review on that. What else have we got around here? Polestar, Puma and it's a BMW, oh, the Drax vehicle. That looks good, nice color that. And that is an iX1, so a nice selection. And looks like we've got a hydrogen truck here, I think. Royal, um, Royal Air Force. Hydrogen fuel, no, is that? I wonder what that is. We'll have to look into that in a second. This bit of equipment is really interesting, and the reason why this is interesting, it's not just a charger. It's got battery on one side, charger on the other, and it's a dual CCS2. This is in development. The unique thing about this is you can plug in with a 32 amp three phase, 63, single phase, or even just simply 16 amp. So I thought this was really, really interesting to highlight because of all the difficulties with grid and power in the UK and being able to charge big, heavy vehicles like these beautiful electric HGV giants over here. This is something that I believe could really make the difference. Yes, there are chargers with batteries out there already, but they do need quite a lot of infrastructure. This is a drop-in product. Um, it is with TUAL Tuol, and they're based in Bista Motion, just like Electrogenic, who we saw earlier. And they're all off. So the hair's getting a little bit wild now because it's been absolutely pissing it down outside. However, what I've just found is a vehicle that apparently has no name, although I think it might be called Jeff. My name is Jeff. Let me just take you through this vehicle. So I'm at the Titan stand and apparently this has been created by Warwickshire University, Cosworth and Titan themselves and another company who we're not sure of. But what makes this really, really interesting, this particular vehicle, is the fact that, yes, it's electric. Yes, it's got a motor in the front and a motor in the back, so it's four wheel drive. But it's also got front and rear wheel steering and it's drive by wire through Titan, which is their specialist thing. They're driving their steering components just here. But yeah, not only that, it's also autonomous. So yeah, I mean, in terms of a vehicle that has pretty much every single you know technology on it going, yeah, I'm not sure what that motor is. So I don't know if anyone can pop it in the comments. Obviously you've got the inverter there, all sorts of steering components and uh, jazz there. Got a radiator there, I'm guessing that's for the battery. I can't see another radiator for anything else. Maybe in the back. Some pretty hefty brakes on it. Looks like some four pots uh, just there. And so there must be another, there we go, there's another radiator in the back. So maybe we've got one radiator for the batteries and another radiator for the inverters and motor. Really interesting bit of kit. And my favorite thing about it is the carbon seats because they look pretty amazing. And also lovely, lovely pad here. What do you reckon? Maybe I should upgrade the TVR seats potentially. But yeah, I just thought it was worth highlighting with the amount of technology on it. And that is from Dynamic Engineering from Titan. But we couldn't not come over and check out the McMurty. McMurk tree. I always get the pronunciation wrong. But also, there's two of them here. Well, it's not like they need too much space because they are very, very small. It's good to see them in two different colors, really. Quite like the blue, look at this. 
very smart. I'm pretty sure I've tried to squeeze myself in one of these before and they are tight as you like. And I'm not sure if people saw it, but this against the uh, RIMAC uh, on the Carwell channel and the Formula One car and both electric cars absolutely smashed the Formula One car and this was absolutely spanking the Rimac until it got to its top speed and then the Rimac overtook it so yeah obviously the top speed is not that great i'm guessing these are the the suckers that are underneath am i right down there yeah active down for safety and grip but yeah it's great to see the mcmurt tree here showing off i can do it while you're yeah yeah go for it go for it Ooh. ah that is so cool so what vehicle is this for? So it's primarily single seaters. Oh, single seaters, yeah, yeah. okay. Oh, so satisfying. It's good, isn't it? You hear that? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, this is so cool. This reminds me of the game you used to get in the 80s where it was just a steering wheel and you see the road and you had to move out the way. I'm going to have to put it up on the screen for people to understand it. I love it. Motec. Nailed it. Lots of wonderful and weird contraptions. Here we have a three-wheeler, three-wheel drive, uh, kind of like a cargo bike, but does a lot more, can go up curbs. It's interesting to see vehicles like this. This is from Virtusa, but there is so much here to see at Senex. I wish I was here for another day. I'm gonna make, make a move to the exit. I've just been dropped off by the electric bus and among lots and lots of electric vehicles here. That's why I love looking at the car park. Uh, just next to Rusty. So I'm going to jump in Rusty and off I go. See you next time.